Okay, everybody, we'll get started with the Zoom meeting for dual enrollment. That way, if you're absent, you can catch up. Or if you need to see anything, again, we're going to post this all online, too. So we're going to open some documents. These documents will look familiar, but I need to explain them a little bit more in detail. As soon as they open up, we'll get started. Okay, this again looks familiar to you because you turn it in. You have to turn these in every semester. So obviously student name, grade, date of birth, name of college. Now keep in mind, name of college, you don't have to dual enroll at just Macomb. You can dual enroll in any public university in Michigan, Open University, University of Michigan. But keep in mind, you are capped at $725 per class. So the reason a lot of people go to Macomb is because $725 is cheaper um, the cheapest way you can go about it is go to a community college. But if you, let's say you want to go to Open, Oakland's going to cost you about twelve or thirteen hundred per class. So you'd have to pick up the remaining balance after seven hundred twenty-five. So that's why a lot of people choose to go to Macomb. So this is the Macomb dual enrollment application. I know this only says fall and winter, but you can dual enroll in the spring and summer. Um, if that's of interest, you should have already talked to your counselor because I know that's starting soon. I know there's no spot for it, but you can just. I, I'm going to update this document to say fall, winter, and spring, summer. A check in the box indicates after discussion whether the high school counselor, after discussion with your high school counselor, not to have this class included on your high school transcript, transcript towards graduation. So you have a choice of whether or not to put the dual enrollment class on your high school transcript or not. That is important. Um, we give you credit for taking um, college classes at the dual enrollment level. If you choose not to have them on there, you have to choose that before the class is taken, not after the class. Some kids are like, I got a poor grade. I don't want this on my transcript. You got to tell me that before, not after. So again, that's why we're going over this. There's a lot of stuff on here. We will talk about how classes, you get a real grade if you are taking a requirement for graduation at Anchor Bay High School. I will explain. If you're taking economics over at dual enrollment and you get a B, you're going to get a B on your high school transcript for dual enrollment economics. That will be incorporated into your GPA. If you're taking something that is a, an elective class over at um, dual enrollment, that only goes on as credit or no credit on your transcript. Credit or no credit on your transcript is based on if you pass it, you get credit. If failed, no credit. Credit and no credit does not hurt or help your GPA. It is not included in your GPA. So if you're taking intro to mythology at dual enrollment, which I know is a requirement for a lot of uh, Michigan transfer agreement stuff, that's considered an elective anchor bay. That's a credit, no credit situation. If you're taking economics over there or an English class in your senior year for your senior year English or your senior year math, that will go on as a real grade. If you're not sure if it goes on as a real grade or not, you have to tell your counselor. You can ask them. And again, we're, you've seen this paperwork, filed the dual enrollment application by the second Friday in May. In fact, you should be turning them in now. April 27th was the beginning for dual enrollment. Um, so dual, excuse me, March 27th was the opening for dual enrollment, not April 27th. My apologies. So you can start signing up now. That way you don't have to worry about waiting lists, which we will talk about. The second bullet point, class, uh, college classes cannot conflict time-wise time with classes here at the high school. We always recommend no class should start before 3 p.m. at dual enrollment, but we realize you have a one o'clock sometimes. Just don't have a one o'clock here at Anchor Bay High School and a one o'clock at dual enrollment. The tough part about that is you guys have already experienced that. Our semesters don't line up time-wise with the high school in Macomb. Macomb starts their second semester on January 10th. We, Anchor Bay High School, does not start their um, our second semester here until January 31st. A lot of kids sign up for a second semester dual enrollment class at one o'clock and expect to start it on January 10th. The problem is you still got a one o'clock here if you didn't have dual enrollment already at Anchor Bay High School. So there's a two to three week gap. Has anybody experienced that issue? No, nobody has. The nice thing is a lot of things offered online as well. So online, I'm telling you, that's, that's a nice way to go. 
students are eligible to take classes in core subject areas like math, science, English, social studies, rural language, computer science. Um, the one restriction is courses must not be offered by Anchor Bay School District. That's a state law. So for example, we have AP psychology here at the high school. You cannot take psychology 1010 via dual enrollment. It's the same class. The state will only pay for you to take it at one facility, not two facilities. I know early college, I know some of you are a little bit different. That's a different law, but dual enrollment, if you're in psychology here, AP psychology, if we offer it here, you cannot take it over there. Some classes that um, we don't have the equivalent for that I would recommend, economics. We do not have an AP economics here, so you can take dual enrollment economics. And then that dual enrollment economics will qualify as your dual or as your economics class here. Make sense? Question? No question. All right. If you have a question, just raise your hand and stop me. All right. Um, the student is eligible to take 10 college classes, which you already know. If the course fulfills a Michigan Merit Curriculum graduation credit towards graduation, the grade will be included on the student's transcript and counted GPA. Again, MMC stands for Michigan Merit Curriculum. So that's four years of math, four years of English, three years of science, three years of social studies. These are your graduation requirements. If it fulfills a graduation requirement, it goes on the transcript and is counted towards a GPA. And again, you also have the ability, if you remember this top section, you, a check in the box indicates after discussion with a high school counselor that you do not want the classes counted towards high school graduation. But again, you have to tell the counselor before that class starts that you do not want it on there. Um, if the class does not fulfill a graduation requirement right here, it will be reflected on the transcript as credit, no credit, and, that will, and it will not be counted in the GPA. If you've already been in dual enrollment, you'll see CR for some of your classes and you'll see a real grade. The counselors do that at the end of the semester. They put in either CR or enter your real grade. The student must be enrolled in both the school district and the post-secondary institution during the same academic semester, although you can take classes in the summer. The number of classes must equal six. And if you're taking classes in the summer, that will count as one of your fall six. So if you take two in the summer, that would go on your fall six schedule. So when you're like, okay, I got two in the summer. In the fall, that means I can only take four because two plus four equals six. Does that make sense? If I take something in the summer, it's counted on the fall schedule. You're gonna be like, I want two in the summer and two in the fall. That's great for dual enrollment. You could go two in the summer dual enrollment, two in the fall dual enrollment. So that's four, you still need five and six. So you would still need two high school classes. So you could do two summer, two fall dual enrollment, and then two high school. Does that make sense? Everything's got to add up to six. There's an equation that allows us to reduce six classes based on the large size of a credit hour, which we'll go through. Like if you have a biology class, that's a six credit dual enrollment class, there's math behind us being able to reduce your high school schedule and not having to have six. But we'll go over that in a minute. The student must maintain regular attendance in all classes within high school and college. The student must provide verification of the college enrollment as requested. I'm going to tell you right now, I've had kids skip. By the way, can you shut that door? The bell's going to ring. I've had kids skip classes during their dual enrollment and never went to dual enrollment. If you fail a dual enrollment class or do not get credit, you have to pay for that class. You have to pay the district back. Um, that's why we give you this and we have your parents sign it. We've had a lot of kids just skip and not go. And then we find out, and then I'm going to say, hey, I need to see verification that you've been going. If they can't provide that, you're going to be, it's not going to be good. So make sure you, um, make sure you're going. The student must provide verification. The student must leave Anchor Bay uh, High School's campus once the student has completed all high school classes for the day. So and the, uh, before every semester, we're going to call you down for next year, you know, this upcoming May and say, listen, we know the schedule. We know what your schedule looks like. You know, the classes you want here are first, second, third, and fourth you can schedule your dual enrollment classes fifth and sixth hour. Or some people like, you know what? I want a morning dual enrollment class and I want the morning off at the high school. That's fine. Your counselor will go over that in May, late May, once we have your schedule ready. We will build your schedule around dual enrollment. We can put dual enrollment anywhere we want in your six hour day. You just can't be here during that dual enrollment hour. That's why we try not to do it like third and fourth hour because you have to technically leave the building. That is an administrative rule that you have to leave the building during that day. They don't want you in the library. They don't want you working in the commons when you're supposed to be in dual enrollment. So again, if you don't have a dual enrollment hour, you're expected to leave during that time. 
If a student drops or is dropped from a course or fails to receive college credit for a course, they, be, they will be responsible for reimbursement to the district for the class. Also, the student will not be eligible to enroll in the future dual enrollment courses until reimbursement has been made to the district. What does that mean? You fail a class, you're paying for it. No, no questions asked. You're going to get a bill from our billing department. So make sure you're not. You also got to watch the drop and add period. Typically, you have five days once the class starts to drop an ad. You do not drop an ad without going through a high school guidance counselor. We have to email them and contact and say, hey, Kaylee Dahl's going to drop an ad. You know, sorry for using your name. I'm just using an example. She's going to drop an ad this. She's going to drop this and she's going to add this. That's OK. But your high school counselor has to know that. Do not register for a class that you did not have your high school counselor being aware about and turning that in. Derek Yaden to counseling, please. Derek Yaden to counseling. So again, make sure that your counselor knows every move you're going to make because they have to prove it and they have to indicate to Macomb they're going to pay for it. Um, for the 2023-24 year, students are allotted $725 for tuitions, fees, and books. Any amount above this is the students' about responsibility for each class. So most classes are between five and 600. Come on in, are you here for dual enrollment? Yeah. Yep, come on in, just have a seat. This is being recorded, so if you missed the first 20 minutes, it's, on, it's gonna be on Zoom and we'll put it on the website. So again, $725 for tuitions and fees. If your class is $500, you can use the remaining $225 for books. Most of you are probably used to the bookstore process already. Yes, we're used to the bookstore process. I know it's a pain in the butt on the front end, but once you get used to it, it's, uh, yeah, she's saying, yeah, that's very true. Um, once you get used to it, it's, it's not bad. Anchor Bay School District is billed directly by the college. You should never be uh, reimbursed for anything. In the old days when dual enrollment started, you used to have to pay for the class, pass it, turn in the bill to us, then we, we, we would give you a check after it was all said and done. That doesn't work anymore. The state says we have to pay for the class on the front end up to $725. If there's an amount above $725, you guys have to pick up the rest, you or your parents. So again, you should not be getting reimbursed for anything, not books, nothing. So when if you're in dual enrollment, you sign up for your dual enrollment class, you go to the bookstore and say, how much money do I have for books remaining? And they will tell you. So again, they, these are the basic rules. You guys should already know these. This is the document that says a student that does not receive college credit under the dual enrollment legislation laws re required to repay the school district. This is what goes to your parents. Your parents sign this. I keep this on file. We actually get audited on this. The state comes in and goes, Mr. Fowler, I need to see for this student, I need to see this document because you got to make sure we, the state has to make sure you're aware you're going to pay for a class if you don't pay credit. So that's this document. There will be extra copies of this document when we go back in about five or 10 minutes. Any questions on this document? And I know a lot of this is redundant. A lot of this is like, Mr. Fowler, we already know this. Great, I just wanna over explain some things. So this is the RMCD guide. There are a couple of different versions. Um, you're used to seeing this, uh, you know, uh, I email everybody this. The most important class um, excuse me, most important column you should be paying attention to is column H. Is this class approved for dual enrollment? It must say yes. You start on this document by looking yes or no. The state does not pay for every class that Macomb provides. Why? Here's a great example. AP Psychology we offer here at the high school. The school, uh, the state is not going to pay for you to take dual enrollment psychology because we have AP psychology here. This column will indicate whether it's already been approved or not. So we've already done the work for you. You just got to sign up for a class that says yes. So again, make sure it says yes. If it says no, you cannot take it. Some kids try to slide a class that says no on me. And then I start looking at everything you sign up for. Normally, I don't question what you sign up for because I think most of you guys follow the rules. But if you start signing up for no classes, I know you haven't looked at that document. And then I'm going to have to start really looking over everything. And I have a lot of questions. Uh, I already know what's approved in, for dual enrollment and not. I'm the one who actually had to fill out the column H. So I see a lot of them start going through. And I'm like, yeah, I already know that one's good. That one's good. That one's good. But if you start putting classes down for no, I know you haven't looked at this. I'm going to say you need to go back and look at this because this is not an approved class. If you're worried about switching classes, always go to this first. Make sure it's approved. Column G. This is the second to last column. This is as equally as important as column H. Column G. Does it meet a Michigan Merit Curriculum graduation requirement? 
So MMC stands for Michigan Merit Curriculum. These are your graduation requirements, you know, four years of math, four years of English, three years of science, three years of social studies. This is what this means. So you could take this class for a math related credit in your senior year. How do I know it's your senior year? Because you have algebra one, you have to do for math, you have to do geometry and you have to do algebra two. Once you get in your senior year, your math related class is 12th grade. You could take anything that says math related and yes in column H. So again, you start looking at these. Some of these say no. If you'll see column H, this one says no. So introduction to anthropology, is that a uh, Michigan merit requirement? No. So if it says no, this is what you're gonna get a CR on in your transcript. These are the classes you're gonna get CR on. This one's gonna say CR. This one's gonna get a real grade because you're using it for a math related graduation requirement. But again, in this column, if it says no, you are not gonna get a grade. You're getting credit or no credit. So you scroll through all of these. So math related, online experience, math related, math related. A lot of these are no. So again, these are just credit, no credit if they say no. Okay, communications, first semester of the fourth credit of English. This is the class you would wanna take for English in your senior year. First semester of fourth English credit. So that's English communications 1180. And then, you know, first semester, or this will be one semester. So you could take this first semester, you could take the second semester, because this says this is equivalent to one semester, and this is equivalent to one semester. So you scroll through, I'll widen this out so you can see it. One year of the two year in foreign language credit could be fulfilled by any of these classes. And again, you'll see that. And again, you scroll through this. Some of these say with district approval. So again, that has to be approved by us. So you scroll through. If there's anything that says district approval, you have to talk to a counselor. Uh, there's some science classes you can take. Again, make sure it says yes in this column over here, the column G. And then yes, for your third year science, you can take human phys. And you're gonna see this human phys is big. This is in fact six credits. Now, a lot of kids confuse this column with this column, and please do not. This is why I want to explain this column, which is column F. Column F tells me how many high school credits this is worth. Column D tells me how many credits it is at the college. These are two separate credit evaluations. They have nothing to do with each other. A lot of people think that this six credit equates to one and a half hours here at the high school. That does not work that way. I'm gonna show you the math here on the board in a minute of how that works. So again, you have six credits here. I'm gonna show you how it works. I'm gonna turn my little Elmo on here in a minute. So you can see, I'm gonna do the math for you. I'm gonna show you this conversion once that warms up and then we'll be leaving in about five minutes. But just let me warm my Elmo up because so, I'm gonna do that conversion for you. Um, but again, all of these columns are very important. Make sure you always list the college class and the code like W-A-E-H-S 2085 when you sign up for classes. I'm gonna to switch to my Elmo here. So you're gonna see how I do the math for a class. Let me close out all my screens. I want the people on Zoom to make sure that they understand this as well. Just give me one second. And the class I'm gonna focus on is this six credit class, biology 1710, or sorry, biology 2710. I'm gonna focus on this. This is a six credit college class. You're like, Mr. Fowler, how does that apply to high school? So let's go to our ladybug. All right. So here's a six credit college class. Here is the, I'm gonna shine the light on this a little bit better. Can you guys see that? Yeah, okay. So this is a six credit college class. You're like, Mr. Fowler, six credits. I only have six credits and you're at the high school. High school credits, and dual enrollment credits are not the same thing. I'll show you how we do the transfer. So first things first, a full college semester is considered 12 credit hours at the collegiate level, not high school. So when I take that column B, I took that six credit class. When I took that, I go six out of 12. That is equivalent to a half, right? We all took math, right? This is equivalent to half of your Anchor Bay High School schedule. 
So one six credit class could be equal to half of your Anchor Bay schedule. Well, there's six hours in a day at Anchor Bay High School. Half of that would be three. So biology 2710 is a six credit college class. Six divided by 12 is a half. So this could equate to three Anchor Bay High School classes. Remember, you gotta have six total classes. This can count as three because it's such a big class. So we do the math on that. You know, um, here's another example. Let's say you had a four credit class. I take that and I divide it by 12. Sorry, my floor is not very good. So that is worth one third of your Anchor Bay High School schedule. Okay, let's see mathematicians in the room. What is one third of your Anchor Bay High School schedule equivalent to? Two, thank you. How did he get that? He's like, one third, well, there's six hours in a school day. Obviously, if you do a little math, six divided by three, that is worth two Anchor Bay High School classes. So how am I doing that? I take four divided by 12. I get the fraction of one third. That is equivalent to one third of your Anchor Bay High School schedule. Now, the tough part is when you don't have a nice even number. Here's a great example. I'm running out of room to write. Let's say you had a three credit class at um, dual enrollment. Three divided by 12 is one fourth. You're like, oh man, one fourth of a high school schedule times six. You're like, oh, that's worth like one and a half high school classes. Well, what is, how do you, do you round up? Do you round down? Now the state is very open-minded. They said, if you're in a regular class, you can round this up. If you're driving there, you can include in this drive time. So you're like, okay, we're driving there. So we could round this up to two high school classes. Now, if it's online, you're probably not supposed to round that up. So, I mean, we don't get audited on that too much, but the state says, if you have a situation like this, if you have a kid driving, drive time can be included in that. And we can round that up to two. If it's online, they prefer we don't do that. Um, we've been audited. I've really never been called out on it. I know you're looking for a black and white answer. Normally in a three and four credit class, if it's four credits, I say, okay, it's worth two. If it's three, I'm like, are you taking it in person? Great, we'll just round it up. If, if it's online, I, I would encourage you to take more. Does that make sense? So again, that's where that comes from. So if we go back to this diagram, this six credit class is worth three high school classes. A lot of kids think it's only worth one and a half. No, no, this is the amount of credit you're gonna get for taking the class. It has nothing to do with the amount of hours you're here. So this column tells me how many hours I'm going to have to calculate for you to be here. This one is going to tell me how many credits to give you on your transcript at the end. All right. Questions on that? I know it's a little tricky. This is why I'm recording this. You can always go back and look at any questions on that. How does NCAA work? I know we have some athletes in the room and dual enrollment. This is largely important. If it says no, here, I'm going to scroll this up. If it says no in this column, column G, if it says no, this does not count as an NCAA class. You're like, and I know I got a football player in the room, Brendan, right? He's like, man, I need to know what, if it says math related, or if it says um, anything in this column other than no, like first semester of fourth credit, yeah, that'd be NCAA. Anything first year or second year of foreign language? Yeah, that's NCAA. If it says no, it is not C and it is not NCAA eligible. If it says something in this column that you're taking for graduation requirement, it is NCAA eligible. So that's highly important. For most of you, if you're not playing sports at the collegiate level, you can ignore that. If you don't know what I'm talking about, this is for athletes. They have to take a certain amount of core courses before they graduate to get into to college. Okay, we are pretty much done. Are there any general questions before I stop recording? Was this helpful? Yeah, some of it's redundant. It's always like, dude, I've already seen this. That's fine, but this is a little bit higher level. I bet you a third of you knew this, a third of you didn't know this, and a third of you are like, who cares? So, but I wanted to make sure you guys knew this in full detail. All right, I'm gonna stop sharing and I'm going to stop my recording.